Hi, my name is Rod Harrell. You have probably watched some of my YouTube videos here on the Orthicon Ghost Channel. Or maybe you've seen some of them. Well, this is a video, documentary, about my diagnosis of bladder cancer. The upcoming operation to remove my bladder damn lymph nodes. And I just want to share some of my feelings about all that. On August 1st, 2014, I had helped a friend move up to Mojave. And on the way back, we stopped at an all-night diner. National chain, and uh, yeah, I had to go to the bathroom, so I went to the bathroom, and there was blood in my urine, and I was like, "What the hell is this?" Blood in the urine? What the hell does that mean? Blood in the urine. That is odd. I went to the ER. And after several hours, they told me, you have a bladder infection. Here is some antibiotics. So I took those for about a week and it cleared up. A couple weeks after that, once again, blood in the urine. We start out dark and then get light. Drink a lot of water. Finally, I had my first visit with my new primary care physician because I just got health insurance only a couple of months before. I say, I say, did you say blood in the urine? Well, that just ain't right. Uh, a couple of weeks later, ran a whole bunch of blood tests and, and pee tests, poop tests. And I think it was late September, early October, the results came back, and it was all negative for cancer of anything, including the bladder. Then I was sent to a urologist, the first one. And that's where my story gets not only interesting, Frustrating. Angry. Some anger there. Hey, let's not forget about the fact that I um, went to the ultrasound people that was uh, twice in November and December um, nothing they of course they saw the uh, bladder uh, diverticulum but you know they couldn't see any tumor at the time which makes me think that it was either too small to see or perhaps wasn't there. Well, this is Jimmy Stewart. I have something to say about the film that we did called It's a Wonderful Life. That film was shot during uh, a time where we had a production code. And part of the code stated that anyone who committed a crime had to be punished before the end of the movie. Now, in the case of Mr. Potter taking that $8,000, he wasn't punished at all. You Baileys have been a boil in my neck since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. Oh, shut up, Mr. Potter. You got your $8,000. You almost drove my brother or Uncle Billy insane. And you got away with it. What more do you want? 
you know, you, you scurvy spider. Oh, man. Anyway, uh, Merry Christmas. Why didn't the urologist take a biopsy when he had that camera stuck up? Well, all the doctors I've spoken with since, and uh, the urologists I have now, uh, are as confused by this as I guess I am, was, and is, was. So then, surgery was scheduled with his first urologist, scheduled for March 26th. I had uh, pre-op blood work done. I had the, um, uh, uh, whatever else pre-op you have, I don't know, man, it all kind of gels together, man. And so, the day before the surgery was scheduled, I get a call from the hospital, and they say your surgery has been canceled. Wait a minute. They called you the night before your surgery to cancel it? March 25th, that was. The hospital called me. So, I had to raise some hell, see. I called the medical review board, see. And I got some action, see. Uh, the insurance company was saying that this urologist had not filed paperwork telling them that he was uh, working out of a hospital that was out of their net work. So there were a lot of delays, obviously. My doctor had to get, uh, you know, to put in a request for a different urologist. By the time I saw that one, it was April. And he uh, did a biopsy the next time I saw him. The results weren't officially known until two days before my first surgery, which occurred on May 20th. So, on May 18th, I was told that the tumor was indeed cancerous, which by then was probably no surprise to anybody. We've been following the story. Uh, when I first saw the tumor, back with the first urologist, of course, it was one centimeter. And um, the next time it was seen, it had grown to three centimeters. And by the time they attempted to remove it from my bladder, it was five centimeters, taking up almost the entire bladder diverticula. I think the state still throws helicopters over my house since that complaint. Thanks everybody for all the birthday wishes. Um, since my, my tumor is almost a year old, I think you should talk to you. Can't really see it, but it's right, it's right here. Hello everybody! Thanks for all the birthday wishes. Yeah, what the hell? What's it going to take to get you cut out of my body? More delays? Well, that's one thing I can't stand is delays. I mean, who's going to step up and finally do that? I don't know. Shut up. Yeah, well, you're you're a, a right rat bastard, Mr. Tumor. Fuck you. Ooh, wow. Real, real foul mouth thing, isn't it? <clears throat> <laughs> I'm trying to do this in one take, kids. <laughs> uh, anyway, thanks again for it's all it's Australian for beer. Crikey! Thanks again for <laughs> thanks again for all the birthday wishes, boys and girls. And right back at you. So there I was. They couldn't take out the entire tumor because the doctor was afraid that he would perforate the bladder, which would take 
this uh, cancer from stage two to stage four, you know, just floating, floating. So then, of course, they had to schedule another surgery. And this surgery, because this one is, is aggressive cancer, uh, it's, it's in a rare spot, because I'm a rare kind of guy. Rare spot in my bladder, rare cancer, aggressive, and not treatable with drugs, such as chemo therapy or radiation. Radiation. Surgery is the only option. And that surgery is a removal of the bladder, the prostate, and the lymph nodes on the hips. How do you live without a bladder? Easy. They take two feet from your intestine and they fashion it into a bladder. Stick all the tubes that run into it, stick a tube right out of it, and it's all hunky-dory. Of course, you can't feel anything anymore. You, you don't have that feeling, oh my goodness, I have to piss. So, apparently I need to be trained, uh, uh, you know, once it's working, to have, uh, you know, to go to the, to the bathroom every two hours and work my way up to three hours and then eventually four hours. The main thing that they uh, are worried about after that is, you know, you forgetting to go piss and it goes... Whoa. Let's also not forget that this intestine bladder still behaves like an intestine. The uh, intestine also has mucus in it, you see, to help the food move along. Well, you have to pay attention to that because sometimes that mucus can clog up the tubes. Yeah, major lifestyle change. But maybe it's a good thing that the only way to get rid of this cancer is to literally cut it out. I guess avoiding me that horror stories are heard about radiation and chemotherapy. But then I guess my horror story would be the recovery period. Who the hell cancels a surgery the day before? I mean, didn't you already know that this uh, paperwork snafu happened? I mean, there was weeks between the, the scheduling of that first surgery and the cancelization. What do I know? I'm just a patient. Well, it... <laughs> ah, let's take one last look at my uh, belly as it used to be. Well as it is now. As much as uh, YouTube will let me show you. I'm scarred and go all the way down there. Woo! And of course, before the surgery, though, you know. Why don't you put a gun to my head pull the trigger Okay, I would like to see the CEO of the insurance company. Let me see these two. I'll start them. Okay. Okay, I, I have to find them. I, you know what I would like is I would like to see the CEO of the insurance company and the doctor redacted, put into, um, a room, no, a basement, with like three hungry lions. Well, here we are again. Two lonely old... Oh, it's, a, it's a different monologue. This is uh, a week. A week ago I had my surgery, in which they removed the bladder. Hello. Place it with a uh, uh, neobladder. 
remove the prostate and the, the lymph nodes, the pelvic lymph, lymph nodes. Hang on a second, I'm starting to slide down a little bit here. Spent the first few nights in ICU hell. I mean, ICU. Here's some uh, more stuff. These things that they uh, used to automatically pump me with various painkillers and uh, drugs and excite excitement, excitement. I see you. Yeah, you know it's a good place to recover. I would not want to live there. I, I tended to think of it sometimes as ICU standing for insensitive care unit. Um, the, 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 the one I was in, the, the room I was in was, was glass. And, you know, it's like you're in a vulnerable position already and you, you don't like it when the uh, nurses would leave open the, the curtain. You, you know, you got your dick hanging out there when they come in and check you out. And, and you got your balls hanging there. I'm not exaggerating, because since Saturday, each one has been about this big, which as you can imagine, is one of the reasons I have the nausea a, a lot. I don't know, you women wouldn't understand, but we men definitely would understand when we act like that. And the knocking together, and being knocked together is like a constant. No. <laughs> what the hell? You're a, a right rat bastard, Mr. Tumor. Fuck you! Um, several days later, I just found out about this a couple days ago. The surgery um, was uh, successful, yes, but the, uh, the malignancy, the cancer in my bladder had metastasized out of my bladder, which was news to everybody, because the last time it was checked, it hadn't done that, and it had metastasized out of, um, excuse me a second, it metastasized outside of the um, bladder into the fatty tissue uh, surrounding the bladder where the, the muscles are. Uh, however, further tests indicated that's where it was, so this surgeon was glad that he uh, took the extra step to uh, remove the, the muscle and the fatty tissue around the bladder and the, and the prostate as well. So I've been thinking about my brother Rudy a lot lately because, um, as you know, he was diagnosed just a few days before I went in for my surgery with terminal uh, esophageal cancer. He's been in and out of the hospital many times since, obviously. was un I was unable to go see him. Before my surgery, and I'm not sure when I can travel, and so it goes. Hospital. This is the this is my hospital version of soap opera. Left hand. Meet right hand. Maybe someday you'll get together. All right. One, two, one, two, three, four. And I'm home from the hospital. There's my uh, gnarly scar. Nice. <laughs>
<sighs> wow. Okay, man. It's like a new lease on life when I'm able to uh, get rid of over 200 cc's of mucus matter from my neobladder. This could be a new song. Mucus matter from the neobladder. You know what I'm talking about. It is truly a new lease on life. Ah. Oh, welcome home. Oh, welcome home. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, all right. Good to be back from the hospital. Um, there are some some things I have to do myself. I have to flush out my catheter twice a day. Getting ready to do that now. Um, I may have played a doctor uh, um, on TV and on the stage, but as you can see, I'm not really. A, Very good one in, in uh, real life. Yeah, the hospital is something else, let me tell you. I think the ICU, uh, I was in ICU for like three days, and, th and that in and of itself uh, merits a documentary, I think. My um, um, night bag, although I can wear it during the day. Night bag is in a, that's for urine. If I haven't already, um, then I'm going to be repetitive here. But uh, they took a portion of my intestine and made it into a neobladder. And you can look up neo. Neo means... Um, New. Hmm? Hmm? So these are the things I kind of have to do, and uh, as you know from earlier um, parts of this documentary, that I'm not really especially thrilled and excited to be here at this point, but it is what it is. It's my new lifestyle, and, and uh, you know, that's, uh, that's how I'm going to deal with it. You know, I have to deal with it, and I'm going to deal with it. Oh, and there's one other thing I want to do before the end of this particular take. Don't you put a gun to my head and pull the trigger And no use for the wives who don't go sticking Why don't you put a gun to my head and pull the trigger Put a gun to my head and pull the trigger 
Don't go 